Okay, so welcome to 2022 question C2, the structure of forms question. The image below, sorry, the image on the right shows a T light holder based on a hyperboloidal revolution. A vertical opening accommodates T light candle. Okay, so we've got a vertical opening there, and that's our hyperboloidal revolution. Figure 2C shows the plan and elevation of a similar light holder uh, in the form of a hyperbolic hyperboloid of revolution. Part A is draw the outline plan um, and elevation of the T-light holder. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, with my plan view by drawing my uh, diameters there, or my circle with those diameters. It's scale once to one, so I can take those values as they are. Okay, the overall height, or overall diameter there is 100, so I need to come down from my XY a greater amount than that, or greater than 50. So come down, we've got 60 there, so there's space, so that's my center. I'll extend that center up, and like that, we're taking quite some elevation. So, radius. First measurement there, my throat circle is diameter 50, so radius 25. Base circle there is diameter 100, so radius 50. circle there because that's to the top so we need to find the top first so we can find that radius so I'm going to measure off my heights so I've got a height of 80 to the center there to the throat circle 80 probably 80 above that so that's 160 and they're saying the distance down is 20 just mark off those heights. Okay. Um, right. So, first off, I'm going to draw find my asymptotes. Okay, asymptotes are always tangential to the throat circle and plan, so that is position of my asymptote and let's project that up to my elevation. And they run through the center. So the elevation my asymptote. Okay, um, I'm going to pick a number of points here. One, two, three, three might be enough. Okay, points on my asymptote and I'm going to rotate them around so that I can see onto the extreme point there so that I can find that curve there with the hyperbola. So we'll just do one point first of all so you can see the process. So I can then locate that point on the asymptote on the asymptote I have here. 
above and below because it's symmetrical. Okay, and where that is project being rotated around, I can project that vertically up. If I take a horizontal cutting plane, which is essentially what I've done, right? When I take a horizontal cut through this object, okay, it creates a circle. Always gives a circular profile. So that's why I've rotated this around, and let's find that horizontal cut. It's just going to be a straight line at the point of the asymptote. So, so that is the point. So I'm just going to repeat that process for a number of points there, and I've actually just realised I can also find three points here by projecting there up, projecting there. So I'll repeat that process for a number of points here. So a horizontal cut creates a Circle. Find those corresponding points on the asymptotes, on the elevation of the asymptotes. points and project them up. Okay, and show those horizontal cuts. So let's slide this down so you can see a little clearer. So here onto my asymptote and they are going to match up with this line coming out. Two more points. Next up, so that we hit our asymptote, rotate it around, project it up. And last point. Throat circle, side of my throat circle for the vertex. Yeah. Okay, so I have my free end curve and let's draw it lightly at the beginning here and then at that height 20 it will be a heavy edge. across because this is an axis here so I can mirror everything across or axial symmetry to bring all those points across so correct them through first Same measurements. Crosses 
Yeah, so I'm aware of that um, I hope Perbola crosses my height line that I've extracted or projected across there. That point and find the corresponding point over here. So this is the top. Okay, this is my base. And I can project up my vertex in the throat circle. So corresponding point there. So frame curve. So that's my hyperboloid of elevation uh, in plan and elevation. Finally, I actually have to remember the circle which I, I found the radius of up here. So I'm going to bring that radius down so I can draw that in plan. Okay, so draw the outline plan and elevation of the two light holder. Okay, that is done. Next up, they want us to draw the projections of the vertical opening. Okay, so the vertical opening, right, we can see is 30 down from the center. It'll be a straight line opening, which is creating a hyperbola. Okay, and um, so what we're going to do <coughs> is once we've drawn that, okay, we'll be able to draw the elevation. Turning it down. Once I have my vertical uh, opening there, I'm going to find points along that, because that's my hyperbola, points along that, rotate them around, so be on that side because that's kind of getting kind of cluttered, and rotate them around to this side, that same hyperbola shape, project it up onto our hyper hyperbolic curve and across and match up. Okay, because once again, when we're taking horizontal, we're essentially finding points here, taking horizontal cuts, which is forming a circular uh, uh, outline in plan and horizontal cut then is a straight line in elevation. So which is points. So I've got one point, two, three, four. Okay, that should be enough. Turn my axe around. Okay, and I'm going to project them up onto my hyperbolic curve. of those horizontal cuts. So. I'll actually do it point by point, so horizontal cut from this point, project it up. So that's the point of my hyperbola. Same again. To the next horizontal cut. That's here. Is there 
so it's on the center line. So I'll follow it around and up and go into my axis. So that's my vertex. Okay, and same as before, I'm just going to mirror or use axial symmetry to find them on the opposite side. So just project them through. Axial symmetry. need to find where to hit the base circle so where is the base circle project up that's another point so that is my hyperbolic curve Of the vertical opening done. Okay, determine the position of the directrix and the focal point for one branch of this double hyperbola in elevation. So, um, a couple of things we need to do here it's linking back to our conics and our knowledge. So, what we need to do <coughs> is we need to draw between our two vertices, we're going to have our transverse, or sorry, auxiliary circle. Okay, and not there already, not in this strong, but we're going to have our asymptotes running through. Okay, where our auxiliary circle meets our asymptotes, that will be the position of our directrix. Okay, one on that side, one on that side. Okay, and then finally, so that's B and V, that's our auxiliary circle, and finally, in line with our axis there, if we go at 90 degrees to our asymptote, from where it hits the directrix, from where it meets the directrix, 90 degrees there, that will find our focal point. Okay, so that will find our directrix, our focal points of one branch of the double hyperbola. So we only need to do it on one side. So, compass, set it to, from the center there to our uh, vertex. Draw the auxiliary circle. Okay, where that strike and Mac makes the transverse, sorry, asymptote. Okay, that is going to be our directrix. So just draw there. TV. And then at 90 degrees, that our asymptote. Where the two of those meet, extend out, and my focal point right, will be at 90 degrees there. That's my focal point. Okay, so that was the 2022 or 20, 22 question C1 structure forms question.